a door that's sealed like a vacuum cleaner. Right, right. Bunch yeah. of holes in the floor. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. I hope I tried to make this as clear as mud to you. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, you did know, a great job, Austin, and I five, just... Five of them, five bag houses, not six. Yeah. No windows and no other thing. It's not that kind of... That, it's not a house. It's only a contained steel box, yeah. if you want. Yeah, right, it's right. Tell me about the ventilation system in the Cinerick plant. The ventilation system... I can tell you that I knew, I didn't know there was one. Uh -huh. So that's what I knew about that, but I had nothing to do with that. Yeah. Not in the bag houses, but in the plant itself. Told me the ventilation system was only turned on when the inspectors came by. Was that your experience? I have no idea when it was on off or any other time. Yeah, okay. John Gagnon's book, if you read that book. Yes. It's that book, you yeah. know, that's very, very informative. And he was involved with the union. There were a lot of stuff from John. Yeah. A nicer guy I never met. Is that right? The guy eh? passed away. Mm. Nice guy, man. Yeah. Really nice. Uh-huh. And seemed to me honest. Not trying to take anybody for anything. Yeah, yeah. You must told me, but I didn't catch how long you stayed working in this earning plant. I worked there for approximately one year. And out of that time, we would have been three months on strike. And uh, in the fall, that summer, I spent that summer there. But part of it was on strike, but I was there in the spring earlier, too. Yeah. And uh, then we went into first aid. We got a chance to do that. No, the first aid was before that. Okay. I went into first aid before the strike. The strike was after the first aid. All right. Winning. We won it in 58. Yeah. Because otherwise that would have been 59. The strike was happening in September of uh, 23rd or 22nd of 1958, and we went back, I think, the day before Christmas. It's almost three months to the day. That's and right. wanted to back then. Yeah, yeah. You want to talk about the strike and the philosophy of the union and the strike and the people, I can sure tell you a lot of stories about that. Sure. What was your experience during the strike? I know you were working, Austin. And uh, what, what was I doing during the strike? You were uh, working. You, I, yeah, I thought you yes, were working in... Yeah. What happened to me during the strike, uh, my wife um, was still working, mm -hmm. so we had one car, Not pay we had not much paper in those days, Yeah. and um, so I went downtown and I said, you know what, I went from one store to the other, mm. and seeing or any place, and tried to find a job, uh -huh. and I found one. It didn't last the whole strike, it only lasted part of the strike. Yeah. I worked in a butcher shop because I had worked for Dan Rain before I went to Winkle. I did work in a butcher shop, so I mean, I can, I knew it was something about meat. Yeah, yeah. And I was quite young, so I got a job there, and then uh, maybe, and they knew I was a striker. Mm -hmm. Maybe a month and a half, he said, you know what, things are quieted down, you don't really need you now. Fine, took my money and run, he just paid me, and they didn't pay very much. They, they knew you are a striker, they're paying you low wages, because mm -hmm. you're not staying there. That's, uh, you know what I mean, that's, uh, yes. got this guy, you know, he needs some money. Yes. So then I went to work at a menswear store, which I had worked at when I was a teenager. And the guy told me just before Christmas, he found out I was a striker. Mm -hmm. I said, he said, I didn't know you were a striker, as I called people in those days. Mm -hmm. I said, you didn't ask. Mm -hmm. He said, I wouldn't, I would not have hired you. That was J.T. Paquette on Durham Street. Oh. Okay? Mm -hmm. He sold uh, like a higher class of men's suits. Uh -huh. and all kinds of other stuff, too. And he said, anyway, could you come back, you know, for Christmas and for all these other things, because now I need you. Mm. I said, you know what? I worked for next to nothing, and I swept the floors, and I cleaned the snow in front, and I did whatever he wanted to do. And I thank you for hiring me, but I'm not working here at these wages or whatever anymore. Uh -huh. I said, thank you very much. And uh, that was it. Mm. When he tells me, you know, that I wouldn't hire you, but then he needs me because he found out I did best job I could. Okay? Yeah, yeah. I don't want to lose that job. We need the money. I mean, we couldn't even hardly pay the rent. Sure, yeah. My wife and I got married. We borrowed money. We didn't have our diamond ring uh, paid for. Mm -hmm. Nor was my car paid for. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, so, Austin, how, how was how was business in the men's store uh, over the course of the strike? Oh, uh, it was pretty good. It was, eh? Yeah, it was pretty good. I mean, I don't know what kind of business they had before that. But, yeah. I mean, it was okay, but they had their customers. Oh. Mm-hmm. And it was a high, cl it was a high class menswear? Well, I would say J.T. Paquette was a little higher class than, say, Engine Brothers, which they had menswear stores everywhere at that time downtown, which I worked at. I worked for a guy uh, that 
he uh, sold uh, the building and sold his store, and he went and uh, he had an apartment built in, uh, building built in Toronto at the time, mm. and that would be in the earlier 50s. Uh-huh. Uh, that, um, yeah, that he, uh, before I went to Inco or worked in a men's, uh, in a butcher shop, uh-huh. he was a friend of Dan Rain's, you see, mm. and, and Dan Rain was a friend of this guy's. They're uh-huh. all from the same country. Uh-huh. And uh, th- I knew him, too, because he used to come in the store all the time, and he bought clothes there. Mm. And I guess they talked together, say, that guy's honest. He knows how to run the cash your register. In those days, you didn't have that. You know that nobody knows how to make change for 2000 whatever it was. Yeah. We had to make change. The cash register never told you, you know, what you got to do in change. Right. Never stole the stuff. And um, so, in a way, he asked me. I said, I don't know anything about me. He said, that's okay. They'll train you. How can mm-hmm. I go wrong? I had another job right away. Nice. When that guy closed down the other store, you know? Yeah, yeah. He sold the whole building and everything. I mean, to Menser. Menser bought the whole thing. He owned half of this place, and Menser was in the furniture business at the time. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think his son's a lawyer. And anyway, mm-hmm. I worked for Joe, Joe Lesser, who was the tailor there. But, I mean, Joe and I, he had a store with his name on it, but he worked for Mike. We both did. Mm. I mean, I had nice stuff at the time because, I mean, custom-made suit I designed myself. Pleats mm. inside, outside, buttons on the sleeves that open wow. four buttons. You know what I mean? Mm. High, high quality made by a tailor from the old country. My you know? goodness. Worked on it myself. And, I mean, uh, you know, on my own clothes. So, yeah. I mean, flashy blue suit and yeah. whatever, I mean. Uh, so, what what, you, what what do you mean you, you worked on it? What part did you do? Well, I worked on it because sometimes we were too busy in the store. I would go work on my own my own clothes that, that Taylor was making. I'd go help him. Oh, I see. he say, well, do this or that, you know. Uh-huh. Do it. I would. Uh-huh. I mean, we're talking here, this is fitted like with about four fittings, shaped right to your, uh, uh, yeah. to your chest. Sure. No feet when that, you, you see the odd politician that has those kind of suits, I can spot them right away. Mm. No pleats, you know, uh, between your arm and your chest. No mm. pleat comes in there on a good suit. That the thing is molded completely to you. Yeah, yeah, right. So I mean, you, you, put, you learned some tailoring skills. Well, I learned a little bit, but there's no darn way I could make any of it. Yeah. You know what I mean? I, but I knew how some things. I'd take some things apart, even when they were too busy. I'd take some other clothes apart. In those days, the clothes were were expensive. The material was, so you mean labor was next to nothing. Yeah. So you could take apart clothes, and the people wanted their clothes altered. They'd pay the tailor to do it. Right. And Joe was an absolute excellent tailor. Uh huh. Where did so he say, Where did he get his training? I would say um, these guys were here were uh, Serbian, Slovenian, uh-huh. uh, somewhere there on one of those, uh, and he'd get that. The old country apprenticed to that. Yeah, wow. That's no, impressive. No, 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 and, and some Italian women uh, could sew too, so sometime later at, when they were in business there, they'd even farm out some stuff to the Italian women. They'd sew mm-hmm. pants together. I mean, they were Italian women uh, from... Um, I don't know. They knew how to tailor. I'll tell you that. They mm-hmm. knew how to sew it beautifully. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? The people that were buying this stuff didn't know that, but Joe didn't make everything. Right. You know? Oh, I see. Uh huh. Uh-huh. So I mean, some of it was farmed out, but I mean, handmade just the same. He he cut it all and make it all, and he just give them the pieces. See? Yeah. Yeah. You know? Right. Yeah. He didn't have any patterns. He just he measured you, and he made it to fit onto your body. Wow. Wow. That's really I mean, impressive. Uh, Excellent. No, no, I, I, with, with this type of stuff here, I mean, uh, I had experience. I know how it's supposed to be done. I mean, yeah. could I do it? No. I wouldn't even attempt it. But I knew how to run a sewing machine because mm-hmm. before that, I worked in a men's store again. And the guy says, um, a couple of guys, I can give you their names even, uh, Zemanskis. I'm probably not even in Sudbury anymore, but they had a store. And he says, I uh, didn't want to pay for cuffs and um, doing alterations. And I said, well, I don't know much about that. Yeah. They had a commercial machine downstairs, big old iron, steam and whatever. He said, go down there and sew. Learn how to sew. The wow. first thing you learn is learn how to sew a straight line. Big commercial machine, okay? Uh-huh. And he says, basically, let the machine do it. I still remember this. This is, uh, I was going to school. I worked there in the afternoon. Yeah. Um, he said, let the machine do it. It was so straight by itself. Don't pull it or, you know, yeah. just guide it nice. Yeah. And, and you know what? Spend uh, whatever time. They were too busy sometimes. And go down there and sew on that machine. There's a bunch of scrap material. Sew it until you can sew straight. Uh-huh. And then I was working for, you know,